The newest chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen witnessed Sukuna's tension for the second time in the anime, the first being against Gojo, and now because of Yuta, who replicated his slashing technique and directly struck him with it. This made Sukuna realize the extent of the danger he was in. Both his hands were sealed to continue activating the hollow wicker basket technique, and his mouth was also occupied with chanting for the technique to nullify the impact of Jacob's ladder sure hit. Additionally, there was Yuji, who continued to deplete Sukuna's energy with each strike and separate Sukuna's soul from Megumi's body to sever the connection between them. The inability of Sukuna to regain his domain or fully use RCT put him in a very precarious position. Therefore, he must act quickly before things worsen, especially since Yuta and Yuji had prepared for this final battle. It began in the previous chapter, with Yuta expanding his domain, and continued in this chapter, as Yuta sent copies of Rika toward the King of Curses from one side, and Yuji attacked him from the other. Although Sukuna managed to fend off both, Yuji's strikes, upon mere contact with Sukuna, began to gradually disperse and separate his soul from Megumi's body. Sukuna also confirmed that these strikes affected his cursed energy output and depleted it upon contact between the two. As both Yuji and Rika's strikes were deflected and they were pushed away, Yuta launched an attack on Sukuna using Oro's sky manipulation technique. On the other side, Rika grabbed Yuji and hurled him directly toward Sukuna once again. With Sukuna's energy level comparable to Yuta's and his inability to use all his techniques due to constantly activating the hollow wicker basket, the combined assault of the two might succeed with repetition. Indeed, despite Sukuna managing to grab them both, the contact between Yuji and Sukuna shook the King of Curse's soul once more, widening the gap between him and Megumi, and Yuji felt the rift growing with each punch he landed on Sukuna's face. These blows might soon cause them to separate completely, something Sukuna wouldn't allow because Yuji's words not only threatened to create a rift between them, but also depleted his cursed energy. However, with Yuta present, Sukuna couldn't focus solely on Yuji. Yuta froze Sukuna in place, using the cursed speech of Inumaki, and then delivered a direct blow with the thin icebreaker CT, sending him flying near Rika, who struck him directly. The heroes wasted no time and immediately turned towards Sukuna to fight him, denying him the chance to analyze the situation further and keeping him in this tough spot. Yuji's strikes would weaken Sukuna to the point where he might not be able to maintain the anti-domain technique, thus Yuta's domain expansion would shatter it completely since Sukuna is a cursed object and his cursed energy keeps decreasing. However, the distance between them allowed Sukuna to unleash a direct slash attack on both. Since the technique couldn't be blocked, it cut through Yuta and Yuji, who possessed cursed energy reversal, enabling them to heal from the assault. Yuta hinted at the impact of Gojo Satoru on the current battle situation, indicating that they were currently able to confront the King of Curses thanks to Gojo's nullification of the Malevolent Shrine. This strategic planning and techniques made Sukuna wonder about the source of the duo's power, but Yuta and Yuji avoided answering the question. On the other side, as expected, Sukuna analyzed the situation, specifically regarding the techniques Yuta had cloned. So far, there have been five techniques. Jacob's Ladder, Oro's Sky Manipulation, Eno's Curse Speech, Derv Technique on Rika, and Charles' Future Prediction Technique from the Culling Game. Yuta indeed used the last one after grabbing a sword from the field and attempted to strike Sukuna with it, allowing him to see the future and strike Sukuna directly in his face, who accounted for all of Yuta's current clone techniques, totaling five, as mentioned earlier. The direct attack on the King of Curses, thanks to Charles' technique, made Yuji believe that a technique Sukuna hadn't heard of might allow them to launch a direct attack on him. Sukuna dismissed the idea of Yuta cloning Gojo's infinity, as it was difficult to execute and drained a considerable amount of cursed energy when used. The last sword Yuta threw at Sukuna using Oro's technique was grabbed by Sukuna, but the sword itself carried Sukuna's own technique, Cleave, which disfigured the Curse King's face and hands. In an intriguing end, it became apparent that Yuta had replicated the slashing technique raising questions about how Yuta's cloning technique works. 
Does Rika need to eat the severed body part of the cursed object? Or does the cloning not require Rika to consume any part of the carrier of the desired technique? With the chapter's conclusion, it can confidently be said that Yuta is the third most powerful character in the series, after Gojo and Sukuna, given his extremely strong performance against the King of Curses, even though the latter wasn't at full strength. However, with all these clone techniques, Rika, and the immense cursed energy, I can't see how Yuta can be defeated. Of course, if we dismiss the idea of Kenny's open domain. Additionally, Maki, who has been absent for several chapters, might also be revealed. Since the entire team is prepared for the big battle, Maki might have some new tricks up her sleeve to surprise Sukuna when he gets weaker, especially with Yuji's punches, and Yuta's domain to separate Sukuna from Megumi. With the increased gap between them, Maki might intervene with the soul split katana and completely separate Sukuna from Megumi. We'll wait and see in the next chapter of the manga after a week from now.